Yes, we can start. Arshima. We are not afraid. We 
Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends and guests, welcome to our today's event, Women in Leadership Challenges and Way Out, organized by Prabhuti Jatji Nagarik and Trotten Chen School of Pro Performing Arts. My name is Kausa Parveen, I'm from Chattogram. I'm indeed pleased to be the moderator of this session. Uh, today's panel of attendees is much diverse and each of them will share insight from the perspective of their own expertise and experience. I'm very pleased to welcome Mr. Utpal Dotto, the organizer of uh, Pugoti Jatri. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Utpal Dotto. Thank you, Kausar. Uh, I'm not going to deliver a long speech here because uh, I am incongruous here. Uh, it's not that uh, I am a male person here, it's the Women's Day, but it's that uh, I am a uh, little bit older than, elder than you all. Uh, and uh, we carried our, uh, out our flag long, since long time. Today, our panelists are all young. So we want, we the old elder one, wants to hand over our flag to the young stars so that they, can, they could carry out the flag in future also. So however, uh, on behalf of uh, our organizations, host organizations, Prabhutir Jatri, Shottan Shen, School of Performing Arts, uh, Performing Arts, and the quarterly Nagodik. Uh, I welcome you all. Please uh, enjoy our events today. The young stars will speak and we will listen to them, and we we'll, we shall inspire them to go forward. Uh, thank you all. Uh, I would like to request Kausar to read uh, the. Keynote concept note, I can say concept note of this uh, event, and she will moderate the program also. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lila. International Women's Day has uh, assumed a new global dimension for women. It's a day when women are recognized for their achievements without regard to divisions, whether national, ethnic, linguistic, cultural economic or political. Women deserve equality, justice, respect, human rights, dignity, peace and safety. Women's rights are human rights. Women deserve respect at work, at home, at school, in politics and science, on the road, on public transport, online. A woman's place is in leadership, in academics, in engineering, in space, in peacekeeping, in the lab and a woman's place is everywhere. This year, UN Women announced the theme for International Women's Day as Women in Leadership Achieving an Equal Future. The theme is also aligned with the theme of the 65th session of the Commission on the Status of Women, Women's Full and Effective Participation and Decision-Making in Public Life, as well as the Elimination of Violence, for achieving gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls. There are challenges uh, that are embedded in the culture in the way we think about leaders and think about women and men. People think women are more compassionate, more sympathetic to others, they have better social skills than men, and the men are tougher, more aggressive and more assertive. People think about leaders who have who have to take charge and be tough. And that image is shared in a culture that puts women at a disadvantage. It's not about being a nice or competent person. It's about being a strong person to take the role that demands a lot of assertion. 
According to Fortune 500, about 93% of top companies are led by men. The differences of genders, similarities in leadership, pro-social behaviors, aggression, partner preferences, and social political attitudes matter in leadership roles. Suitable qualification, aptness in a speaking, debating, robustness of a good organizer help women leaders to break the barriers. At the same time, there is a paradox if a female leader is much assertive and decides to be just like a man, it doesn't work for women. It could take on qualities being assertive to some extent, but never to go to the extreme, rather add to it the qualities of warmth, kindness and empathy. A woman needs to display both sides and the expected blunt works for women in leadership roles. The female is in a labyrinth, so she shouldn't give up, but try to learn from it. Women who do make it true are worthy. It's important to remember the double bind, because as a person, she's expected to be kind and caring, and at the same time, as a leader, she's expected to be able to take charge. Moreover, looking at women who appear to be their own models and being persistent are important as well. The barriers and challenges of women leadership are all along the way. It's not as if she is exactly the same as men and then near the top there is a glass ceiling. The metaphor of glass ceiling doesn't adequately represent the nature of the challenges. The man has some bumps along the way, but the woman has to go through the labyrinth. As she rises, there are different challenges. It goes on and on. She might take a wrong turn, but it's possible to turn around and go on if a woman is really persistent in her leadership role. People think that leaders are masculine and assertive, so men are more like leaders than women are. In recent years, there has been some gain in thinking that leaders had more feminine characteristics that is in particular um, more social skills. People continue to think that leaders need to be tough and assertive, but they should be somewhat socially skilled. So it was a shift that would be less likely welcoming to women. It just was some addition to the social skills, sympathy, empathy, to what people expect for leaders. Pro social behaviors encompass a lot of different kinds of behaviors. Men are more likely to, um, to do physically dangerous acts such as saving somebody from drowning, running into a burning building, etc. The women are somewhat overrepresented when the helping is of certain types, such as volunteer organizations, doctors, and nurses. Who go into dangerous situations. Women are well represented in those kinds of organizations. Women tend to be in roles that uh, communicate community demanding, nursing, teaching, social work, etc. There are other roles too. Again, there is an internal segregation. For example, in uh, public interest law, we find many women professionals in women and family law. Challenges women face differ depending on the culture and work environment, but some are common for women worldwide. One of the key challenges women face is finding the optical balance between looking after family and looking after work. Motherhood is not the only challenge women face. Women are still less likely than men to receive a promotion. Women who negotiate are more likely to get feedback that they are intimidating, too aggressive or bossy. One of the biggest challenges are currently facing by female leaders is equality in the workplace. Women leaders must not give up and enhance the skills necessary to give them those opportunities such as communication skills, leadership development and emotional intelligence pick up be heard. Supporting and empowering each other is important. They must be just, be humbled, show togetherness, passion, excellence, 
enthusiasm to it, laying the foundation of their progress through their performances. Many women leaders fear being rejected. Sharing voices and perspective can help shape the policies, the workforce perspective. They face challenges like being put down, pushed aside, or told they don't belong to belong at the table. It's not easy to be bullied, but uh, there is a way to get past it. Women must put efforts to build healthy relationships. But that needs to create a strong personal brand, establish guidelines before each project, position themselves as experts in their fields and communicate with confidence. Perfectionist tendencies sometimes harm the growth. It might be a shorter course, such as a few uh, uh, short meditation or a longer activity like a walk, journaling exercise, and such approaches work well to help manage perfectionism. Rebuilding confidence, reconstructing a network, dusting off old skills, and developing new ones. Catching up on technology are significant too. Group interactions to participatory leadership activities such as in building goal setting for participation in decision making and problem solving and sharing information often increases organizational effectiveness. Organization must offer equal pay training and recognize the steps to overcome the barriers. The barriers women must recognize within organizations are discrimination, the stereotyping and negative preconceptions. Participate. Leadership styles are important. People of all genders, races, colors, and nationalities have a universal desire to participate in the decisions that affect their lives. In order to show positive results, organizational effectiveness has to be planned, structured, and carefully monitored. With women's increasing knowledge of how to balance life and work, it's making it easier for them to climb to the top while still raising a family. Lasting effectiveness gains will be realized only through effective utilization of people and the system within which they operate. Thank you. Um, It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our first speaker, Ms. Nadia Nuhrapti. She is a student leader for Chagram Bangladesh and she is a student of law faculty. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Ms. Nadia Nuhrapti. Can you please make sure you can hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, I can. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, hello everyone. My name is Nadia Nudrapti. I am from Chittagong and I am a student activist of Bangladesh Students Union. Uh, today, first of all, I am really, really honored and privileged to have this platform to share with all of you. Thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity. So today I am here. Um, I would portray a short visual of current Bangladeshi women through my description. Um, in Bangladesh, women are almost the half of, half of the total population, but still we are far behind from the men's in almost every sector. According to the World Economic Forum in 2020, Bangladesh was ranked seventh in the political empowerment of women with 50 seats in parliament and almost 12,000 12, local political officers. But the truth is in spite of having a female prime minister and several female political leaders, the general women in our country are still left behind. Women are still not acknowledged and appreciated enough for their capabilities in our country. The theme of the, this year's um, in, uh, Women's Day by the United Nations is Women in Leadership, Achieving an Equal Future in COVID-19 World. 
but when we are discussing here the opportunities of female leadership and the way and the challenges and the way out so meanwhile in bangladesh women are not even receiving the same wages for the for their jobs for the same jobs a female labor is paid half or less than the half of what a male labor gets for this reason women are um, not able to cope up financially with men even after doing the same jobs the female dominating society still stand as a harsh boundary in the development of women a large number of female child in our country still don't get proper education due to the financial crisis or an awareness or superstitious beliefs the ethnic women of our country are not entitled to receive their education in their mother tongue various groundless and ill founded religious beliefs are formed or being used as obstacles for women religious norms are being misinterpreted to in wrong ways to be used against the women in our country child marriage is also a very big problem for our nation it is one of the main reason for women lagging behind in our country a large number of males in the society are responsible for this kind of situation in our country as they hold back the women of the family and to captive them within the um, household barriers with household chores or baby raising or child raising only as a result they don't get any opportunity to part in leadership then a large number of women are ignorant in their own matters there are many women who are not uh, aware enough or conscious enough about their own rights the patriarchal system has made them a part of that system the uh, which systems um, behold the uh, hold the uprising and pushes them downwards once there was a time when women were not entitled or allowed to vote but now it is there are many women who are not willing to vote because the women are not um, ever enough to take part in this process because they don't understand that um, uh, they need to participate it, it is a very important important right for them so they are not interested in participating any kind of outer or non personal matter other than the family matters there is this interest of participation among um, women of all ages and lastly the rate of women abuse and harassment in bangladesh it's impossible to think women's leadership without ensuring their safety more than 1500 women were raped in bangladesh in the year 2020 regardless of any age from children of 6 months to women of 90 years fall a victim to it according to a national daily about 26700 rape cases were filed in the last 5 years people were here are so ignorant or tabooed about this incidents that 80% of the people don't even seek for any remedies or don't even file any cases most of the filed cases remain unsolved for years and years other than that women face abuse and harassment almost every field on a regular basis like um, in educational institutions workplaces public transport and religious institutions as well so the lack of proper laws and the loose ends in our prevailing laws are mainly responsible for this kind of situations also working women often struggle to balance between their family and work on the other hand women uh, men are not um, worried about this kind of situation so there are many institutions and companies who don't really provide the facilities or proper facilities for the mother workers as a result female workers often quit their jobs after giving a birth to child so due to all these problems and lackings bangladesh offers a very little opportunity for women in leadership only a small number of women are engaged in leadership in our country most of the times women opinions aren't even valued enough the females are not very much appreciated for sharing their views and thoughts women aren't con- considered qualified enough as well as a leader because women are not mainly or doesn't 
have a tough image or aren't vocal enough to be a leader. And it is also believed that women are sensitive, emotional, who, women, which can be a disadvantage uh, for a leader. But uh, I go to disagree. The only qualification that should matter in leadership is the leadership itself. So a leader who is true and consistent can only bring prosper and change regardless of any gender. Moreover, I think if a leader cannot connect emotionally with his followers, he would also fail to, uh, to build uh, a teamwork. Being able to give an emotional importance to your duty is necessary, whether it's a political sector or job area. I am an activist and my <clears throat> emotion towards my country and people allows me to perform or participate in various issues. The wrongdoings around me triggers me emotionally, gives me anger and rage, which I, uh, which keeps me going on in this kind of participation. So I disagree with the fact that um, emotion and leadership uh, cannot be together. So women leaders of our country should continue pursuing their aim. They need to carry out the vision for inspiring and encouraging other women so that they can step out of their shoes and come forward to uh, take part in the leadership. At first, we need to ensure the education of every female child, whether it's an ethnic woman or um, Bengali woman, whatever it is. The participation of women should be increased in every sector. Women need to share their opinions and their views in, the, in their family matters and uh, in their workplaces as well. Suitable entertainment should be provided to women according to their needs. Proper laws should also be made and the current laws should, should be maintained properly. And um, every law should, uh, should focus on women's safety and free movement of women. People should be made aware of the religious and superstitious norms which are being used as an obstacle of um, the progress of the women. And last, when the society would start to only judge people or count on one's ability and quality, not gender, then it would be a perfect place where women would be able to step ahead for their um, for the leadership and take our country to a new level. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Nadia Nurprakti. Um, I'd like to mention one thing. Uh, our respected participants, he can speak either in Bangla or English. Bangla by English. Um Panuna Dash Rimi, Atlanta, Georgia I'm pleased to welcome Ms. Anunna Dash Rimi to render a Tego song. Go 
It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our next speaker, Ms. Osarugo Otebele. He is a graduate and senior English major at the Spelman College. She was born in Benin City, Edo State, Nigeria, but she currently lives in Memphis. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Osarugo Otebele. Hello everyone. Um, like she just announced, my name is Osara Goyal Tibale, Um, and I was born in Nigeria, but I currently live in Memphis, Tennessee because of COVID, I'm not in Atlanta. Um, and today I really wanted to talk to you all about some of the reflections I got when I went to the recent um, UN International Day, International Women's Day event, um, because I'm particularly interested in the ways that leaders, specifically male leaders, talk about the need for more women in power, when oftentimes, um, these women continue to perpetuate the same patriarchal structures that men have already done. So I'm going to speak on the ways I think that um, calling for more women in power, which is quite great to have, can also have some problematics. So yeah. During the UN and UN Women's International Women's Day event, many guest speakers, including the 65th chair of the CSW and the Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, spoke about the need or importance of having more women in roles of leadership. During their various speeches, the disturbingly low percentage of women in roles of leadership around the world was constantly discussed. Like these speakers, I also think that something productive can come out of having more women leaders. But I am concerned that their call for more women in positions of power makes the work of gender equality seem like women's work. What I mean by women's work is that the idea is the idea that it's up to women to bring gender equality to the world. Listening to male speakers call for more women leaders felt almost like an excuse to remove men from the critical roles that they play in holding the structures that render women as secondary beings. Rather than calling for more women leaders, I would also appreciate it if these men spoke about what they would do to reconstruct the patriarchal structures women did not create. Moreover, the call for more women leaders also excuses some men from learning how their power and privilege impact their engagement with women outside of politics. Simply put, these men do not have to deal with their own internalized sexism if they allow more women to have leadership roles because they believe the women would do the job for them. This Women's Month, and particularly because of this event, I'm also thinking about the differences between visibility politics and the economy of visibility. In the introduction to her book, Empowered, Popular Feminism and Popular Misogyny, Sarah Bene Weiser describes the economy of visibility as the idea that just simply seeing more women in positions of power means an end to all a woman's struggles. In contrast, 
Visibility politics is the idea that re representation is a means to ending social struggles, but not its total end. I think that most of what I've heard during the International Women's Day event held by the UN falls into the economy of visibility category. Women should not have to wait for more women leaders to experience real change in society. We should not have to wait for more women leaders to be elected to get access to basic needs like pads or contraceptives. It should not take having more women leaders for girls and women to have better access to education. We need to question what our male leaders are doing while we wait for these current for these new women leaders they want to elect. While thinking about the rules of visibility, my mind went to a recent book I had to read for my contemporary India class called The God of Small Things. I thought particularly about the character of Baby Kochama, who is a perfect example of how we often do not need the presence of men to uphold the structures that they created. So I questioned how valuable it would be for us to have more women in positions of power. There was a woman who just last week in the United States voted against the $15 minimum wage increase. It was also a woman, the governor of Alabama, who signed the bill to criminalize abortion in the state. The hook reminds us that we do not need men for patriarchy to exist. I want to follow that by saying that we also don't need them for poverty, elitism, rape culture, and sexual violence against women to continue to exist in our society. If the women we elect are just henchmen of the male leaders already there, then how can this change and how much change will we really see? So this Women's Month, while I want to see more women leaders in, in, in political positions and in smaller roles in society, I'm also thinking about how currently in the state of Tennessee, male Republican senators voted to give men the power to veto a woman's right to an abortion, saying that a father would have the right to tell a mother whether or not she could keep her child or abort it. I think about how these very men are the same ones who do in Women's Month made speeches about how they want to create a better world for their daughters and their wives and their sisters. It is, these, it is the way of saying, I use this example as a way of saying that it's important that we see more women in leadership while also asking that our male leaders who are already in positions of power continue to do what they can do to change the world for the better. We can not only live it up to women to change the role of society, but also ask ourselves, in what ways do you engage the women in your life as a man that impacts them negatively or causes violence in their life? We cannot wait and put all the work of gender equality in the hands of women. Rather, it is essential that we ask our male leaders and male members of our family, friends, and community how they can do their parts right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm very pleased to welcome Dr. Manisha Chakravarti, the politician, Secretary General, Socialist Party of Bangladesh, Purishal. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Dr. Manisha Chakravarti. Dr. Manisha Chakravarti, Shalutu Janamshi. Uh, thank you uh, for your uh, welcoming. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to welcome everyone who is uh, present in today's session. Uh, today we are uh, celebrating International Women's Day. And uh, I can see that uh, there's a headline like uh, women in leadership, the challenges and the way out. So uh, because uh, we are uh, gathered today to uh, celebrate Women's Day, so I would just like to mention a few lines about the origin of the Women's Day because I think that would guide us uh, to uh, the direction uh, in which we would like to uh, have uh, we would like to find our way out. So uh, if we look at the history of International Women's Day, we can see that it was not uh, very uh, elite or uh, any type of uh, uh, the so-called uh, elitist movement that uh, gave rise uh, to the history of Women's Day. We can see that it was just women workers who uh, were uh, protesting in the, in the streets of New York in 1857 
and they were protesting for uh, wages they were protesting uh, against the disparity between uh, the working hours disparity between their rights as a workers they started protesting and they also protested for the right to vote and uh, we see that this uh, uh, this labor movements uh, they were uh, con uh, concentrated uh, with time and we can even see that the 1886 labor movement that uh, gave rise to the history of May Day. And uh, after that, we, we can see that in, in 1910, it was finally declared by Clara Zetkin as uh, International Women's Day in the uh, Socialist Women's Conference. So uh, this, uh, this is the history in short. So we can see that Women's Day has a history of struggle. Women's Day has a history of movement. Women's uh, Day has a history of uh, courageous women who were constantly protesting against the social norms, against the social rules, against the disparity that was called to be normal. Uh, women didn't have the right to vote uh, even just a, a century ago. So uh, this uh, right to vote was first given, uh, just to mention, in socialist uh, Soviet Union, uh, as I think everyone here knows already. So if we uh, remember, the spirit of Women's Day, then uh, we, we should look at the today's scenario. We should look at how much we have come forward, how much we have achieved, because it is the 111th uh, Women's Day we were celebrating. And uh, we can see that uh, even in today's world, that uh, the women in the world, they Monisha, you should not say. Hello, Hello, please. Uh, and we, we also uh, know that the women uh, in the world has only the ownership of one percent of the total uh, wealth that is owned by a human being. And even in Bangladesh, we can see, and not only in Bangladesh, in many countries, we see that the uniform civil court or the equal right in family properties, that is not established. So women don't get the same amount of property. Uh, they don't inherit uh, uh, by law uh, the same amount of property. This is a major uh, problem because uh, in many countries of the world, this is a legal disparity, uh, the disparity which is defined by law, that you are a woman and you don't get the equal share uh, as your brother. So, uh, and even if the economic disparity uh, is, uh, a, I think, is a fundamental base for all the disparities we see in our uh, personal life or family life. Uh, such as in Bangladesh, there are uh, the women who work in non-government sector and informal sector. They get at, at least 33% less wages than the men. So this is the economic part. And if we come to the harassment women face every day, we, we can see that uh, in the mass uh, transports, 94% uh, of women, they face uh, harassments every day. And even uh, the child marriage, just in between uh, this COVID situation, Bangladesh stands forth and in the world uh, in, in this case. And you have heard about the rape uh, statistics uh, from, every, uh, from everyone uh, already. So <clears throat> I think uh, this scenario only tells us the necessity to revolt today, the necessity to protest today, the necessity to stand up for rights. Um. Hello. 
everyday advertisements or even in cinemas or even in dramas we can always see that women are are portrayed as objects uh, to sell they are uh, portrayed as commodities which uh, in turn uh, which in turn intensifies the mentality to torture women or the mentality to uh, see women as a uh, under human uh, under human existence so uh, this is a uh, uh, very uh, important because a uh, capitalist outlook also uh, portrays women uh, to as objects and uh, this uh, creates a mentality which is in turn uh, a very harmful for the safe environment uh, for necessity for the development of women also we can see that uh, the women uh, labor it is always exploited like a cheap labor Uh, even in bangladesh we can see that uh, there are many garments which is a rising sector of bangladesh and even in this garment sector women are always given less salary than men even for doing the same work and i have even mentioned it that it's almost uh, always 33% less in average so <clears throat> this uh, this all uh, mentalities or this all system is a uh, very deeply rooted in our economic disparity it is deeply rooted in our legal disparity we have uh, laws that discriminate between men and women we have uh, economic system that discriminates between men and women we have uh, a system of exploitation which uh, portrays women as commodity for benefits only uh, for selling their products so this uh, system uh, is i, I think uh, this system leads to the disparities uh, we are seeing today and if we uh, want to liberate women we cannot only liberate women by just celebrating a day we can only uh, liberate women by uh, carrying on the struggle the struggle that uh, gave the origin to this historical day the struggle that uh, was for the liberation of uh, also women workers and also uh, as a whole uh, the workers uh, of the world so uh, today if we uh, can integrate these two movements then uh, i think we have a bright future uh, and that is the only way out uh, to change the fate of this discrimination that 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 has been uh, present in the world with the origin of this private property and everything so uh, uh, i i would like to just thank everyone who had organized this uh, conversation this seminar today and uh, i i am also uh, i'm i'm very sorry that i have to leave i uh, wish everyone uh, in this uh, session a uh, very uh, best wishes and uh, i hope that this meeting will be a great success thank you thank you jyoti let me act minute act of the bully apni amar mane khubi khubi pochonder apke ami khub bhalobashi khub khub ধন্যবাদ speaker off but rest of us can off okay then that that one can work so all right thank you thank you all right um uh, i'm pleased to welcome miss marcela vargas she is the human rights activist and the singer she's from usa Please join me in welcoming Ms. Marcela Vargas. Yes, hi. Thank you very much for welcoming me to this space. I'm honored to 
share this space with everyone. I'm originally from Bolivia. My ancestors are Quechua and Guarani. And uh, today I'm going to be singing two songs, but one now and the other one at the end. Uh, the first song that I'm going to be singing is about, um, it's a song in Quechua, and the singer is called Luzmina Carpio. Um, she is a very strong woman who continues to fight for the women's rights in Bolivia. And uh, one way that she has been um, fighting for this right and reminding us of the strength that we have within is through song. So I'm honored to be able to share this song with you. And that song is called Amasua, Amaluya, Amakeya. <clears throat> Thank you. My liberation is in the light of the heavens. My liberation is in the dark. The green grass and the heavens cross boundaries of mind and body. Of the transcendent, losing myself, my liberation takes its flight from symphonic rhapsody and from the heavens. I'm very pleased to welcome Ms. Ruvina Trumpa, a former student leader, singer, and singer, she is joining from Atlanta, Georgia. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ms. Rubina Shampa, she will sing a beautiful Tagore song, Amar Mukti Aloy Aloy Eyakashi. <laughs> Aloe, aloe, eia kashe, amar mukit. Aloe, aloe, amar mukit. Dhulai, dhulai, khashe, khashe, eia kashe, amar mukit. Aloe, aloe. Deho monir shudur pare pare peli aponare Deho monir shudur pare pare peli aponare Gane shuri amar mukti Urdhe bhaase ehi akashe amar mukti 
We've been waiting for Ms. Uh, Dipshita Dhar. Ms. Dipshita Dhar. I think we have to wait for her. Uh, she is not here. I don't see her here. Our man, I am not promoted to join. She joined Kurli. Uh, okay. uh, actually, just for notification for all of the uh, audience, uh, Dipshita uh, actually she Nirbhajan Kurche Poshchi Mangal Bali Tege. Jodiyo she student leader. She bolte sa mage. She ashbe abong she alu chana jukto hobe. Uh, so we have to wait for her a little bit. So next, for uh, Right. Mm. Thanks. Oh, now I'm very pleased to welcome Miss Chitta Chaudhary, student organizer, environment and environmental activist and anti-racist activist, Ontario Student Action Network, University of Ottawa. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Chitta Chaudhary. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uncle Aniki, um, I'm a presentation to share with the Pablo. Presentation to share with the Pablo. I'm Richie. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Chitta. I live in Canada. I am in my fourth year of university at the University of Ottawa in Canada's capital. Um, I've worked as a student organizer as well as an anti-racist activist. Uh, and um, thank you for inviting me today. Uh, I will talk about women leadership in the political struggle in and against Canada today. I wrote a lot, so if I talk for too long, please uh, let me know and I will cut it short. Uh, next slide, please. Um, it, International Working Women's Day first began from within a workers' movement, as Dr. Chakraborty already spoke about. Uh, these workers' demands included insurance for mother and child, the political rights for working women. And although we now say International Women's Day instead of International Working Women's Day, we must not forget that Women's Day is born from workers' struggle. 
Our goal as activists and as comrades is not to be CEO, it is not to be wealthy, it is not to have economic power over one another. It is, our goal is liberation. Um, and to achieve liberation, we as working women of the world must demand um, leadership roles in our community with the goal of ending patriarchal systems and other forms of oppression. I am honored today uh, that I am speaking amongst women comrades that have taken on the difficult task of leading their communities in many different ways. I will begin by outlining some political struggles in Canada and then move to talk, to talk about my personal experiences as a woman in leadership position and finally address some ways that we may address the problems we experience. Um, so as many of you know, Canada is a former colony of the British Empire. This land has been colonized by Europeans, predominantly by British and French, and it was taken by force or trickery from Indigenous peoples. Some land in Canada was taken by treaty or by legal means, um, and, but most land in Canada was not given legally. So Canada is stolen land from various nations and peoples. Today, Indigenous people are still fighting for land and water. The land struggle is most noticeable in the western part of Canada, in which people are fighting against the construction of oil pipelines. Uh, this is not just in Canada, but in the US as well. Indigenous nations and peoples are fighting together against the construction of the pipeline, and they face constant threats from the state through military and police. And women are highly involved in leadership positions against, um, in, this, in these struggles. This fight is an international fight. Uh, sorry, next slide, please. Uh, this fight is an international fight as Canada's wealth comes from mining and extraction um, from Latin America, Africa, a little bit in Africa, not so much in Africa, more Latin America and within Canada itself. These Canadian corporations destroy land, uh, use child labor and destroy water. Um, so many guerrilla struggles across and popular struggles across Latin America often fight against these corporations. Um, so the fight against Canadian imperialism is both within Canada and worldwide. Uh, next slide, please. In many indigenous cultures, the social and political system is matriarchal. So traditionally, in many social systems, women are leaders. However, because of colonization, there are internal cultural struggles where Europeans have introduced patriarchal systems. As a result, many indigenous women face violence externally from outside the community, but also from within their own community. My close comrade and friend is an indigenous frontline land defender, and I'm very um, grateful that they shared their own thoughts about women leadership in the front line. Here she outlines the struggle that she and others have faced. Challenges in the land back era in so-called Canada on native and unceded land. Sorry. Um, in so-called Canada, our women are, are matriarchs and leaders and the front line city to countryside. The biggest challenge we face is the colonizer manifesting in our men through lateral violence until we begin to address colonization in our communities. I'm afraid I will have to watch many women and two spirit like myself pushed out of leadership. The only solution is understanding our history of colonialism in a Marxist Leninist lens so we can fully confront the effects of colonialism, imperialism and build organizations that grow not deplete. We must uphold women, not just in our words, but materially. Miigwech. Um, so I will also want to speak a little bit about the missing and murdered Indigenous women movement in Canada. So as I think Nadia spoke earlier about the high rates of rapes and um, murders in Bangladesh that go uninvestigated, this is true for Canada as well, but it's particularly for Indigenous women here. So between 1997 and 2000, Murder rates of Indigenous women were almost seven times higher than those of non-Indigenous women. And police are often involved in the violence that Indigenous women face. There are hundreds of missing and murdered Indigenous women and their cases are not investigated and their communities are left unprotected. So Indigenous women have fought against this for years and they've um, led nationwide protests for the past several years. Uh, next slide, please. In Canada, education is handled by each province. I live in Ontario, and after the provincial elections in Ontario in 2018, um, tuition prices uh, increased, less funding went to student unions, and student loans and grants were cut by governments. So many students were forced to drop out of school or take a year off because they could no longer afford it. 
Uh, food insecurity is also a big problem amongst university students in Canada, where because many university students do not um, have a lot of money with them, uh, mostly because tuition is very high, they tend to not be able to afford healthy, good food. So in response to these problems, I and other comrades started the Ontario Student Action Network. It was created so students can advocate for themselves. In my work, we connected with dozens of other student organizations in the province and organized rallies across Ontario. Thousands of people were left school and marched in their cities to advocate for free tuition. We also ran training and workshops. Our ultimate goal was to work towards a student strike, but we were unsuccessful in that goal. Uh, now I will share my personal experience as a woman in leadership position. Here I face, in Canada, I faced two major difficulties. First, I'm a woman. And second, I'm a woman of color. So here we face racism as well as sexism. So we have two major obstacles. Um, in my work, I noticed that we, as women in leadership, have two major struggles. The more obvious one is a struggle against any man in power. So politicians, police, our bosses, our professors. Another struggle that we have, and a less obvious struggle that we have, is amongst our male peers, our male activists, our comrades, that should support and uplift us, but instead oftentimes work against us, intentionally or unintentionally. So I have had struggles from within the activist communities with male comrades underestimating my ability to lead, preventing to me to lead, and making the community feel unsafe for all women and LGBTQ comrades. Uh, so, for example, one day I was speaking to a large audience, hundreds of people, and I was speaking like this with a megaphone in my hand, and a man who is my comrade is, and is much taller than me, six feet, grabbed the microphone from my hands, and he did this so that I could no longer speak. So, essentially, he took the role that I was playing as a leader and as a speaker away from me. Um, and it was a very embarrassing experience and I did not know how to react. Uh, so what we can we do? So they're training in the front lines. We must train these men on what is appropriate behavior and what is not, as well as how they can effectively uplift and defend their women RP comrades. If they do not comply, they are not welcome. Additionally, we need to address police brutality that we face um, as activists. And women activists are often placed as in a greater disadvantage in this regard as we are, are threatened with sexual assault when we are in police custody. So it is difficult to protect each other when some of us are in police custody. The most important thing to is to prevent arrest from happening. So group de-arrest tactics are important to prevent arrest as well as tools such as shields to prevent beatings. And third, we must support and uplift each other as women comrades. Um, thank you so much for letting me speak. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Uh, Ms. Dipshita Thor, she there. Right, uh, I think we can go for the next. Yeah, I think that's better. Mm -hmm. I'm pleased to welcome Ms. Oshima Day from UK. Being a beautiful top person. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Oshima Day. She's from UK. Jamuna Jalan 
Pleasure to introduce Ms. Lucky Akhtar. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Ms. Lucky Akhtar. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm very glad to meet with all of you. Uh, I was uh, eagerly waiting uh, to hear the speech of Dipshita Chakraborty, uh, um, but I know that uh, I think she will join us later. And as well as uh, when uh, this meeting has started, I was uh, very delighted to hear all the speeches given by our young leaders. And it was really inspiring. 
for all of us. So uh, at first I take my greetings, all the participants of this meeting, all the viewers, and especially I am giving thanks to uh, Shutan Shin Group of Performing Arts and Prabhuti Jatri uh, for arranging this type of program. So we are uh, celebrating International Women's Days and we, uh, our leaders have discussed about uh, the challenges uh, which uh, they face in different parts of the world. So um, before me, um, I will just sum up some of our uh, leaders' speech. Um, at first, uh, when Nadia has given her speech, she has uh, uh, depicted a picture of a country, how the women are suffering. Uh, she has given a lot of statistics. So um, at the, uh, we have uh, heard her um, about uh, the women's situation and Otivele, uh, she has given some of uh, the um, pictures of uh, the theoretical pictures uh, uh, we get, uh, get. And lastly, our uh, uh, Bonisha Chakravarti has given a detailed picture of uh, uh, actually Bangladesh perspective, uh, what we are facing. She has given a uh, uh, history of women movement and also the uh, present perspective. And lastly, uh, I would like to thank Chita Chaudhary. She also has given some of the data how they are facing this type of uh, problem and how they are engaging with this type of movement. So at first, um, when I was hearing, uh, my experience is uh, almost the same. Um, I would uh, like to share with all of you one of my experience, which I gained in 2018 when I went to Brazil. At the time, uh, there were uh, 44 countries who were present in, the, uh, uh, in a program where um, the women leaders have shared their views, their uh, sufferings, their uh, struggles. And as I see that, uh, that these are almost, uh, uh, all the struggles are almost the same. Uh, some, the intensity is uh, in somewhere is less, somewhere is uh, higher. But uh, the struggles which we uh, see, these are almost the same. The sufferings are also. So these are the actual scenario of the world, I will say. So what I want to say about that, that we have given the data and this is a very um, common to us that uh, just you have seen that because of a pandemic, women are the main victims of the pandemic usually, that they are the worst victims. And uh, if any war takes place, then we, we see that the women are the worst victims. So these are uh, why that um, women are facing different types of challenges. They, it has, um, uh, uh, we need to think about it. At first, what will I want to um, say that, uh, that uh, uh, we are um, seeing that uh, the, the majority lands of the world are occupied by the males. And uh, if we see the political struggles in political participations, we will see, we will see that uh, the major political leaders in the world either, uh, you, you will see that the, there are the male dominance is there and the participants of women are lesser. And it is one of the uh, uh, actually indicators. And uh, at first I want to, um, one of the things I want to share with you that uh, uh, one of us uh, later written by Lenin, she, uh, he has said that he, uh, ha, if you want to measure a social diameter uh, or the social progress, so you will uh, see the, the, the condition of a women. Then you will find that uh, what is the, um, uh, their society is. 
so um, uh, this is the actual common thing that in uh, because of pandemic we see that the rate is higher the child marriage is higher the women uh, they are getting uh, tortured by uh, uh, this is becoming higher and in um, and actually this type of pandemic has shown that the economy just like that the new liberal economy which has pushed us uh, this situation this political situation and uh, this type of economy plays also makes uh, women more victims and you know that that uh, we are struggling in in midst of this um, corona we are struggling uh, to uh, against rape uh many uh, progressive students uh, and uh, cultural organization they were on the field against this type of rape and we are urging that to uh, to change the definition of rape we are urging to de- uh, change the laws which are very uh, actually very uh, what should i say that it's uh, not uh, uh, up to date so we are uh, uh, urging for that and when we are working on uh, the our prisons in prison sectors when we are working then we say that there are many types of uh, 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 issues which we have to assert just like that when our uh, in agricultural sector um, we see that the women are not uh, uh, getting certified as a farmer so uh, they are struggling for that that how they will get the farmer card because they are not created as farmer although they she is working um, 17 works among the 22 works so this is the actual situation and this type of situation how, why it is it prevails it prevails because uh, uh, it, it remains because of the political situation <clears throat> so we have to uh, think about that women struggle is a political struggle and this type of situation is getting uh, worse day by day because of this political situation that when you don't have any democracy in a country and if you don't have any uh, political um, stability um, the, the government has not the political stability and also the uh, the people are the worst sufferers that uh, we have um, said that um, the international women's day has demanded at the time that the right to vote and but uh, still now we, in our country we see that the the not only the women but also the male all don't have the right to uh, actually vote they are they are not participating here there is no participatory democracy here so that situation is uh, becoming worse day by day so we should have to think about it that if we want to do uh, to liberate uh, liberate the women Uh, so our social uh, struggle is must and uh, we have to do a lot of struggle and where women issues should be in the mainstream and uh, in, when we are uh, working with the political parties we have to uh, raise the voices that the women's um struggle or women's issues should be raised in the mainstream political struggles so uh, then it will be uh, uh, we will get the equality and there so i think that the, there are a lot of problems we are here but um, our political struggle uh, for uh, uh, for the women struggle that should be on the same way we have to but it is of course yeah, we have to think about it that a woman uh, when she is in a leadership uh, she has to uh, 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 um, she has to be very active she has to uh, be um, uh, be very, um, uh, prove herself day by day and when she was in a leadership she faces a lot of bullying a male cannot uh, do uh, just like that so uh, women struggle is uh, uh, actually more harder uh, but when uh, uh, that's why we need to the to the women's participations in politics more and more and not only in the, the for the public um, uh, participation but also women's participations in political uh, parties is need that in the decision making body their participation is very important so i think that we have many challenges all over the world we have we are fighting 
and we are uh, the victims of bullying. We are victims of superstitions. We are victims of uh, the um, uh, free market economy. We are the victims of this type of new liberalism. We are the victims of that worst capitalism. Uh, but we are fighting. In many parts of the world, we are fighting. So our fight should be continued. This political fight should be continued. And to, to fight it, our education is must. And um, if we want education, then our fight is also must. So these are all uh, simultaneously we have to done it. And I think that uh, when um, in your concept note, which was uh, given first here, here uh, it was said that uh, that uh, uh, we need the uh, women's right as it is a human right. So uh, we think that as a that we as a women. Um, we need the dignity as like as a, a human being. Uh, so we need to be treated just like as a human being in uh, to get uh, uh, to vandalize all types of uh, uh, disparity. So I think uh, our fight should be continued and you know, to fight this um, uh, 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 this worst situation. Uh, international the history of International Women's Day will inspire us that uh, we need to be mobilized uh, uh, we need to mobilize and uh, without the mobilization of the strong um, the workers peasants and all of the classes we cannot uh, uh, attain in the, our gain so this is very important for us uh, I, I, i'm giving thanks to all of you for your patience hearing thank you very much I'm concluding here. Thank you, Ms. Lafayette. Thank you very much. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Ms. Julie Kapal. She's joining from New York. Please join me welcoming Ms. Julie Kapal. Shulekha, please unmute. I mean, um, Shaweka Shumbab Donova, Jari young leaders at so. I am proud of you. So you are great. Do all good job. Thank you very much. Thank you all. We are still waiting for Dipshita. I am not sure she could join or not. Karun Tari Nirbhajan Jolse. Dipshita, did you join? Karin Madhe, I am not taking the debo. Or Nahal, our. Okay, I am. Which the part me, Dada? Miss Shulekha Paul, you mean? Shesh Kurchan. Yes, Shesh Kurchan. Okay. Um, now I'd like to go for the next person. Then I am pleased to welcome Miss Ila Chandra from Atlanta. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Ila Chanda. Ms. Ila Chanda. Shunarat Chayamakri. Chachay. Dhanavad Shabayke. Dhanavad Amadir Paravurti Pujanmu. Jara aske participant korechen. Jadir hathe amra moshal dechi. আমরা এখন পিছনে আমি সত্যি সত্যি আপ্লুত সত্যি সত্যি তোমাদেরকে ধন্যবাদ জানাচ্ছি যে তোমরা সেই মশাল নিয়ে চলছো এবং সবাইকে আপি মার্সের শুভেচ্ছা ভালো থাকবেন সবাই অনেক অনেক ধন্যবাদ
sorry unmute please kausar uh, unmute please <laughs> It's my pleasure to introduce Ms. Marta Lavergas. She's an activist and singer. Uh, excuse me, Kausar. Uh, before that, can yes? we can we uh, give someone to recite a po poetry? Uh, Kakuli might. Uh, sure, uh, sure. Uh, before Marcela, Marcela will end the program. Uh, so before right. that. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, um, can I? Would you plus uh, tell me the surname of uh, Miss Kakuli? Mm. Full, full name, please. Kakuli Vishwas. Okay. Mm. It's my pleasure to introduce Miss Kakuli Vishwas. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Miss Kakuli Vishwas. She will recite a poem. Miss Kakuli Vishwas. ধন্যবাদ প্রগতি যাত্রী সত্যেন সেন পারফর্মিং আর্ট এবং সংগঠন কেন সবাইকে ধন্যবাদ এই অনুষ্ঠানটা আয়োজন করার জন্য আমরা আসলে এতক্ষণ আমাদের যে নেক্সট জেনারেশন তাদের আলোচনা শুনলাম নিজেদেরকেও সমৃদ্ধ করলাম এবং আশা রাখতে পারি আমাদের ভবিষ্যৎ প্রজন্মের প্রতি তারা এগিয়ে নিয়ে যাবে আমাদের দেশকে আমি একটা কবিতা আবৃত্তি করছি কবিতার নাম হচ্ছে বিকর্ণ আর জ্যোতির্থের লেখা জাগ্য সেনির খুলছে শাড়ি টানছে ধরে দুঃশাসন দায় ছিল যার গর্জে ওঠার নিচু মাথায় সে পাঁচজন দুর্যোধনের নগ্ন উরু ইঙ্গিতে তার ধর্ষ কাম হস্তিনাপুর দেখছে বসে ধস্ত হতে তার সুনাম অন্ধ রাজা সিংহাসনে আর তো চেঁচান বৌমাতার নিজের দলের নির্যাতনে সব রাজা হন নির্বিকার কর্ণ বসে হাসছে হাহা রাজার দলের লোক তো সে শর্ত বিহীন সমর্থনে তাবুত আরাম সুখ বসে ভীষ্ম দ্রোণ কৃপ নীরব সরকারি লোক হাজার হোক রাজার কথাই তোমার কথা তুমি যখন রাজার লোক খল শকুনি দেখছে সবই বস্তু তো সে ধ্বংস চায় ঘরের মাটি লাল হয়ে যাক দেশ বিভাগের যন্ত্রণায় সুশীল সভায় ঘটছে যখন রাজ অপরাধ যখন ঠিক তখনই তার বিরোধে চেঁচিয়ে ওঠেন বিকর্ণ বিকর্ণ নন কেউ ক্যাটা লোক একশো ভাইয়ের একজনা তেমন করে এর আগে কেউ তার কথাটাই জানত না যত গৃহে কারেননি রা অন্তত তা নেই লেখা ভীমকে যখন বিষ খাওয়ালো তখন তার নেই দেখা কিন্তু যখন প্রকাশ হতেই কাটছে নারীর আব্রু কেউ স্তব্ধ জিভের চুপ সাগরে বিকর্ণ হন একলা ঢেউ চেঁচিয়ে ওঠেন রাজার কুমার যুবরাজের বিরুদ্ধে মহাবলী পাণ্ডবেরও তখন গলায় শেশুর নেই রাজাও যখন নীরব থেকে সায় দিয়ে যায় ধর্ষণে ঠিক তখনই সমস্ত যুগ বিকর্ণদের স্বর শুনে আমরা যারা কিচ্ছুটি নই একটি মোটে ভোট কেবল অত্যাচারের সামনে এলে সঙ্গী শুধু চোখের জল পোষ্য ভাবে জাবনা চেবাই অন্ধ এবং নিকর্ণ প্রার্থনা থাক আমরা যেন একবার হই বিকর্ণ প্রার্থনা থাক আমরা যেন একবার হই বিকর্ণ ধন্যবাদ দাদা আমি কি এরপর 
হ্যাঁ আমার মনে হয় আমরা দীপশিতাকে পাচ্ছি না দীপশিতা জয়েন করে নাই আমাদের এখানে সো বাট আমার মনে হয় আমরা দীপশিতার জন্য একটু শুভেচ্ছা রাখি সে তো নির্বাচন করছে তার নির্বাচনে যেন সে বিজয়ী হয়ে আসতে পারে বেস্ট উইশেস ফর হার যেহেতু সে নাই তাদের স্লোগান হচ্ছে হাম কে চাহতে আজাদি তো নিশ্চয়ই তা সব মানুষেই আজাদি চাই চাইছে Thank you. Um, thank you again for giving me the space to share this song. Um, before I um, do the song, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what I'm wearing because it's a big symbol uh, to my people and to women all over the world. Uh, the green handkerchief is a reminder for women's rights, uh, women's uh, resistance and equality. And the red shirt uh, we wear to remember all the missing and murdered indigenous women. Um, So I'm honored to be in this space with, with so many comrades. And it's nice to know that there is a lot of, uh, that this movement is only beginning and it's only getting stronger. Um, the song that I'm going to be singing next is a song by uh, Vivir Quintana. I'm going to be singing this song in Spanish. It is the new anthem that we will be singing to remind us of the power that we have within and that we are no longer going to accept abuse and we're no longer going to stay quiet. Uh, we are uniting in power and uh, we're only gonna get stronger. Um, I do wanna, uh, my throat, has, I woke up with a sore throat. So if you hear uh, the tone out of tone, my voice out of tone, uh, please know that it's coming from a place of love. Okay. <clears throat> so this song is called Sin Miedo. That means no fear by Vivir Quintana. Que tiemble el Estado, los cielos, las calles, que tiemblen los jueces y los judiciales. Hoy a las mujeres nos quitan la calma, nos sembraron miedo, nos crecieron alas. A cada minuto de cada semana nos roban amigas, nos matan hermanas, destrozan sus cuerpos, las desaparecen. No olvides su nombre, por favor, señor presidente. Por todas las compas marchando en reforma, por todas las moras peleando en Sonora, por las comandantes luchando por Chiapas, por todas las madres buscando en Tijuana. Cantamos sin miedo, pedimos justicia, gritamos por cada desaparecida, que resuena fuerte, nos queremos vivas, que caiga con fuerza el feminicida. Yo todo lo enciendo, yo todo lo rompo, si un día algún fulano te apague los ojos, Ya nadie me calma, ya todo me sobra. Me to si tocan a una, respondemos todas. Soy Claudia, soy Esther, soy Teresa. Soy Ingrid, soy Fabiola, soy Valeria. Soy la niña que subiste por la fuerza. Soy la madre que ahora llora por sus muertas. Y soy esa que te hará pagar las cuentas. Justicia. Justice. Thank you. Excellent, Marcela. Thank you very much. That concludes the session on International Women's Day 2021 here. Thank you very much, everyone, our respected participants, friends, and guests for your presence and attention. Thank you so much. <laughs>